Hi, my name is Debbie Kent from Store This Not That. Welcome to another one of our monthly classes where we share with you ideas to expand and use your food storage. This month's class is on dehydrating. Today we're going to be talking about um, how to choose a dehydrator, what kinds of things that you can and can't dehydrate, um, how to store your um, dehydrated foods, um, and some ways that you can use them. And we're going to start out with why should you dehydrate? That's such a good question. So one of the reasons, of course, is money. Instead of spending your money on commercially dehydrated and freeze-dried foods, you can actually dehydrate your own for a fraction of the cost, especially if you're using fresh fruits and vegetables from your own garden or buying things um, on sale, especially frozen things that you can quickly and easily dehydrate and then add to your family's food storage. Another reason you want to use um, dehydrated foods is that the food many times is already prepped. You don't have to chop and peel and do the things you normally do. It's already done for you and you just have to pop them in your meal. You also can make ready-made meals that with your home dehydrated things that you can just stuff and add water to. Another important reason why you dehydrating your own foods is so great is that you can dehydrate the things that your family really likes that you aren't necessarily able to buy commercially. Things like beets or um, baby carrots or a certain kind of apple that your family likes. So there's a lot of um, reasons that you want to do your home dehydrating. And one of the biggest reasons is that it saves a lot of space. Um, when you're buying or storing canned foods or freeze-dried foods, the food is stored in its whole state. Um, it's large. So, you know, an apple takes up a lot of space. A pound and a half of carrots takes up a lot of space. In this instance, this is a pound and a half of dehydrated baby carrots. It only takes up less than a cup of space. So that is another reason that's great to home dehydrate. And one of my favorite reasons is it's beautiful. You can actually use dehydrated fruits and vegetables to decorate your home with. Leave them as in jars and snacks on the counter for your kids to eat. There's just so many reasons to dehydrate. So let's get started with how to choose a dehydrator. Well, if you're going to do dehydrating, you really need to have a dehydrator. So let's get started with learning a little bit about the differences in dehydrators and things to watch for in picking a dehydrator that's right for you. Um, there are the smaller, inner, inexpensive dehydrators. They are usually round. They usually only will hold about three um, square feet of food. Um, a lot of them come with um, hard trays so that it's hard to get food on and off. And you'll see that the holes are relatively big. And so that means little things can fall through unless you um, buy some extra trays for them so that your small things don't fall through. Um, the thing, the problem with these harder trays is just harder to get things off of them. Um, also, you can get the rectangular ones, which have a lot of similar things that go with the smaller ones. They hold, with six trays, they'll hold about um, eight square feet of food. So it is a little bit better. And the more, the square size means there's more usable space versus the round size where you lose unless you're using small things, you lose a lot of area around the edges. These ones also have hard trays to them, but some of them come with these smaller, flexible um, netting kind of trays, which make it really good. You can put any size of product on them, except for, of course, more liquidy kinds of things like um, fruit roll-ups or things like that. Um, then you'll need a different kind of tray, but these are a little bit bigger. They're also a little bit more money. They're about twice the price of the round ones, but they do hold more than twice the amount of food. So, you know, there is some balance there. Um, one of the things you also need to consider when you're looking at dehydrators is how big is your kitchen? Did you have just a very, very small kitchen with not very much space to do dehydrating? Are you just planning to only do like herbs and you know, maybe a couple of things so you're not really using your dehydrator a lot, then you don't really need to have a big dehydrator. You can just get away with getting a small one. 
However, if you are planning on um, having a garden or getting things on sale or really using your dehydrator for your preparation and making um, food, then you're going to want to have something that's a little bit bigger, but that means more money. Um, these bigger ones are kind of the Cadillac of dehydrators. They're made by Excalibur and um, they come with trays that slide in and out which makes it very easy to put your food on. You can um, have less trays in there if you want. If you have taller things that you need to have more space, or this you can't change the height on them, this one that you can. In fact, you can actually take all the trays out of this one and put bread into rice or uh, quarts of yogurt in to be able to um, turn into yogurt. So there's a lot of things you can do with these. Um, where you can't do that in these other two. So these are really strictly just for drying food where you can do a lot of other things with the bigger ones. Um, something else you want to look for is um, these two particular ones do not have temperature controls on them where this one does have a thermostat on it. You want to get a dehydrator for a thermostat. Nowadays you can get them for about $60 with thermostats. The reason you want a thermostat is if you don't have a thermostat, you can't control the heat. So your things that need to dry at a cooler temperature, such as herbs, are going to dry only at a high temperature. And things that need to dry at a really high temperature, like jerky, are going to dry at a temperature that's too low to make it safe. So you really need to get something that you can vary the temperature depending on what you are dehydrating to give it the best chance of drying correctly and um, drying in the right amount of time without um, burning or overcooking while it's you know getting to the point that it's all the way dry. Um, one of the things that I like about these flux sheets is that when the food is done on them I can just pick them up off my tray and I can kind of just bend them like this and the food all just falls down and I can pour it right into my jar or bag without having to try to pick it up and put it in or you know scoop it in. It's just a really easier way of doing it. Um, some, of, some of these kind, of, the rectangular ones also come with um, netting like that, so it'll make it work. Something else you wanna look for is um, dehydrators that you can get, usually they're extra, but um, sheets that you can do uh, more liquidy things on them if you're doing um, any kind of um, if you fruit roll up or vegetable roll up you can do them on these because they start out kind of liquidy and then they dry up um, or um, whole meals um, and that way you can spread it out and it won't make a mess also when you're doing things like frozen raspberries and blueberries even but especially the raspberries and the boysenberries they will bleed while they're dehydrating. And so you can put them at the bottom so they don't drip all over your other food. Or you can just start them out on sheets until they get relatively dry and then dump them from the sheets onto the tray and then you don't make a huge mess in your dehydrator because really I don't like cleaning my dehydrator. Although this one is really easy to clean. These ones not so much. Another thing you want to think about it is where is the fan heater unit? With these ones, the fan and heater unit is in the back. So what that means is that it evenly blows the heat and the air across your food to evenly dry all, this one has nine trays in it, all nine trays of my food. If you get ones like these, the heater fan elements are either on the top or on the bottom. And when that happens, the, the trays that are closest to the heater fan unit, of course, are gonna dry faster than the ones at the top. So that means every few hours you're having to take it all apart and move things around, so shuffle them around so that you're getting a, um, a more evenly distribution and you don't burn your foods at the bottom when your ones at the top are still not even hardly done. So you can do it that way, it's just a matter of reshuffling. I like not having to shuffle but that's totally up to you and what you can afford. Some things that are um, not that as far as dehydrators are things like homemade dehydrators that are in wooden boxes that are not covered with something because they're really hard to clean and there also is a possibility of them catching on fire. Um, there's also ones that you can dry outside, but you which do work, but 
only for fruits and only if you're in an area that has very dry, relatively even heat. If you're in a humid area, they're not going to dry out and there's going to be bacterial growth. So that's not a good idea either. Um, and also a lot of people think you can dehydrate in your oven. Really, it's not dehydrating. It's more cooking in your oven because the temperatures are not going to get low enough. They're not going to get as low as a dehydrator in order to be able to um, or dry out the food evenly so that it's safe to eat and no, there's no bacterial growth caught in the, in the middle when it's drying on the outside faster. So those are the three not um, to do. Oh, something else is you don't really need to have a timer. A lot of them come with timers and you can use them but I just set mine all the way to the highest and that way my oven isn't accidentally shutting off when my food is not all the way done. And then I have to come in and realize oh, it's not done. I have to restart it and, and kind of, you know, take a few steps backwards to get it dried. It will still work, but it's just another step. And you really, it's really hard to over dry. You really can't over dry dehydrated, dehydrated food. So don't worry about that. So you don't need to spend extra money on a timer. Um, okay, pretty much that's all that has to do with dehydrators. R really, what it has to do with is what your needs are as a family. If you're going to do a lot of dehydrating, it's really worth it to spend the extra money on this. Um, with these ones, you actually can get more trays, so you can dehydrate more at a time. But the more trays you add, the longer it takes to dehydrate. So you're really doubling your drying time compared to just spending the more money to get these. And the trays are like $10 a piece. So you know, that quickly adds up also. If you added uh, eight more trays to this, that's 80 more dollars. That is now gonna be more expensive than this. So all those things are need to be taken into consideration when you're getting ready to dehydrate. And for me, the easier, the more efficient, the better, and the better experience that I have with dehydrating. So those are your tips for finding your dehydrator. Alright, let's tackle what can and cannot be dehydrated. Um, fruits and vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables, of course, can be dehydrated. Pretty much all of them can be dehydrated. It just depends on the time and the temperature that you're dehydrating them at. Um, you also can dehydrate things like canned things, canned fruits and vegetables, or canned beans also can be dehydrated. They make instant beans if you do that. You can even dehydrate sauces, um, but you want to make sure that your sauces don't have a lot of fat in it, don't have really fat in them because fat things don't dehydrate well. You can dehydrate them, but for short periods of time. You can also dehydrate things like cooked rice and cooked pasta that you can use in um, instant meals or um, meals that you just, just add water to meals. You can easily dehydrate, in fact, the, one of the easiest things to dehydrate is frozen uh, fruits and vegetables because the, the blanching and all those things have already been done. So you basically just pour them onto your um, dehydrating tray and dehydrate. Um, those are all things that can be dehydrated. And once again, you always want to dehydrate the things that you really like and think about, you know, what is going to make your life easier. Now let's talk for just a moment about things that um, really shouldn't be dehydrated. Now there is a lot of controversy with the not dehydrate, so I just want to get that out front. But the Center for Home Food Preservation, these are all on the not do not dehydrate list. So things like um, cheese, um, meats, especially fatty meats or avocado or eggs and, and other dairy products. Those are all on the do not dehydrate list. Um, now, of course, some people do dehydrate them and they taught that you can dehydrate them, but we are saying safety first. And um, you can dehydrate some meats, um, especially for short term for like backpacking meals that um, they will stay dry for um, a week or two especially if stored correctly with, you know, without air, dark, cool areas. So, but these are on the do not, um, in not dehydrate list. You might, um, it's really better just to buy them commercially dehydrated. They're doing it a little, in a little bit safer things. And those things can be just purchased. But since the bulk of what you're going to be dehydrating are fruits and vegetables, things that you can add to your basic food storage to make meals, there's really no reason why you really need to get into those. 
You can just stick with the things that are safe. 